and welcome to another week of Sunday Club at Home. It's really great just now that places are beginning to open up a bit, we're able to do a wee bit more, but it's going to be a while before we're able to meet together in church. So I'm really pleased that you're able to join with me this morning. My name's Doogie and we've got lots of fun things planned for you today. We're going to find out what happened next in the story of Moses when he went to Pharaoh and asked that he let the people of Israel leave Egypt. We've also got another amazing messy church craft. This week we've got Ali and Freya showing us how to make a scene that depicts Moses leading the people across the Red Sea. But before we get to all of that, we're going to start with a song. It's called My God is Big and Strong. Church, and today we're going to show you how to make a picture of Moses parting the Red Sea. Freya's got a version here using paper dolls because Moses had lots of people through, so you can choose which version to make. First thing you need is lots of paper. So we've got some A4 white paper, we also found some blue paper for the sea. If you don't have any, you can use blue colour pencils or pens to make your paper blue. You're also going to need some coloured pencils and a glue stick. And also some scissors. Okay. First thing we're going to do is make the bottom of our C. So take a piece of white paper and you're going to get a yellow, orange, brown colour pencil and you're going to colour it in. This is the bottom of the C that we'll see once Moses opens part of that C. Will we all sandy colours? Yeah. Noises, don't they? So now you've got a sandy bottom for your C, and you're now going to take some blue paper. And you're going to fold your paper in half, like this. And this gives you a line down which you need to cut. Okay, and cut your paper in half. So you cut your paper in half. And then you're going to take one side of that and fold it in half again, down the long side. And again, this is going to show you where to make some cut marks for your waves. So when you open it out, you've got a line. You're going, going to make some cut marks to the middle of it. You're going to cut about every two to three centimetres. Okay. Thicker ones make thicker waves. 
um, thinner ones makes not so thick ways and they sometimes break when you curl them. So now what you're going to do is you're going to get um, your bit of paper for all of this and you're going to get a glue stick and then you're going to glue it down on the bit of paper. So you're just putting glue on the solid side, not the, the wavy side. Yeah. And you're sticking that on one side of your A4 sheet. So it looks like something like this. Yeah. And what then um, there's going to be two ways to curl it. I'm going to show you the easier way and Mum's going to show you the harder way. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get one of the strips. You're going to fold it in half. You're going to fold it in half again. Then you're going to push it down. Then you're going to undo it so it makes a little, little wavy things almost. Yeah, folding it round on itself yeah. and then when it uncurls it'll look like a wave. The other way that's maybe a wee bit fiddlier, but if you want to try it you can, is to take a pencil in one hand, with your other hand support the bottom of the wave, and then you're going to use your thumb, the other side of the pencil, and push up. And as you push up with the paper, it's going to create a curl. Can you see that okay? So we'll do that for each sheet. So this one uses the pencil to curl, and the phrase where you're folding the paper over to make a curl. And this makes it look like the sea's really parting. Yeah, it looks like the waves are going across. So it should look something a bit like this when it's finished, if you do it my way. And then you're going to repeat the same steps on your other half of the paper. So then a bit like this. Yeah. So you fold, you've I've got the other half, you okay. fold, you'd have folded it Fold's and then you have cut it. And then this time you can choose whatever way you want for your when you do the waves, you could try a different way or you can do the same way as you did. So you're just going to do that again. So cutting every two to three centimetres up to this folded line. Can you see that? And then glue on the smooth side, on the other side of your A4 sheet. And then you can get curling, just like Freya said. Yeah. There you go. Look great. Again, you can do Freya's technique, folding them over, and I'm going to use the pencil to curl. Now, the next step after this is to make Moses and his people. Yeah, so you can make stick men, or you can make one Moses. There we go. So there's our C, and the C's parted. So to make a Moses, I took a little piece of paper here and I drew a stick man on it. If you're not sure, you could ask somebody to help you. You could also trace maybe around a picture of somebody in a book. Um, if you don't want to do that, you want to make the stick man, you can get a for a sheet of paper. You're going to fold that in half. You're going to fold that in half again. Then you're going to fold it in half again. And then you're going to draw a little person on it. So you're going to cut it out, make sure the arms and legs touch the edges and you don't cut them out or it won't be connected. And then once you cut them out, it should look something like these people. And then um, you can stick them down. I found mine um, stood up quite well. You can draw little faces on them, you can make one Moses, you can draw expressions on them, it doesn't really matter, you can do it how creative you like. And you just put them in the middle and then... That's right, so that's here's my model. Moses shape I've cut out. I'm going to draw a face and some clothes on him and I've, I've kept this little tab here so I'm going to fold it back up and I'm going to put glue on this side and that means that he'll stand up in the Red Sea. Okay. Yeah, you can be as creative if you want on these waves. You can do little white bits at the top. You can um, make it lighter blues or dark blues or whatever you'd like. And then, um, yeah, we'd love to see the pictures you, if you send them in. Um, we would. We'd love to see what lovely scenes that you create. There we go. So do you want to hold it up to the camera so you can see yours? So these... 
There's Freya's Red Sea with Moses and all his people, God's people. And here's Moses on my sea. You could always do too. both of them. You could do a big Moses at the top and then you could do a little We hope you have lots of fun. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. So Moses ran away from Egypt to the land of Midian. After many years, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses and told him to go back to Egypt to free the Israelites. After much protesting, God granted Moses his brother Aaron to speak on his behalf. So Moses went to Egypt. And on his way there, he met Aaron who was ready to do whatever God wanted him to do. The Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians, but God had a special plan for Moses. After rallying God's people to them, Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. and said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has said. Let my people go. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh made the Israelites work harder because of this. The foremen of the Israelite slaves were angry with Moses and Aaron for causing this trouble. So Moses cried out to God and asked why this was happening. But God said, you will see what I will do. I am the Lord. I will deliver you from slavery. Wow, okay. Hey. Moses told this to the people. But they were so discouraged that they didn't listen to him. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and to do exactly as he said. So Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh. God told them to take the staff and throw it down before Pharaoh. Pharaoh was not impressed. He called his wise men and sorcerers and they did the same thing. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> but Aaron's staff swallowed up the sorcerer's staff. Uh? Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them. Shoo, shoo. Just as God had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the banks of the Nile River and meet Pharaoh. Hey, Pharaoh! Oh, my. Moses and Aaron did just as God had said. But again, Pharaoh's magicians did the same miracle, and Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. So God sent nine more plagues to Egypt to show his power. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard, and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up and heard a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house in Egypt where someone was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and told him to be gone with the Israelites. So the Israelites left Egypt immediately 
and made their way to the Promised Land, taking with them many riches from Egypt, and they took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. But after they had gone, Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. When the Israelites saw Pharaoh and his armies come, they were terrified. But God made a way for them. Through all of this, the Israelites saw the great power of their God, the one true God, and they put their trust in Moses, his servant. Sometimes things don't go the way we expect them to. We can have plans, we can have something we're really looking forward to, but it ends up being a disaster. Or maybe it doesn't even happen at all. There's probably lots of things this year that you were looking forward to. It may have been things that were happening at school, maybe a trip or something like that. It may have been a party you were looking forward to, or maybe even a holiday. And now, it's not going to happen. When that happens, we get angry, we get frustrated, we get upset, and we just think it's not fair. You may remember that last week we heard about Moses was asked to do a job that he really didn't want to do. But he agreed and he decided he would go and speak to Pharaoh and ask him to let the people of Israel leave Egypt. But things didn't go the way that Moses thought they would. Rather than letting the people go, it actually made the situation worse. Pharaoh made the people work twice as hard and treated them even worse. And at that point, Moses turned to God called out to him and said, what's going on? Why have you even brought me here? Why am I doing this? Do you even care? You know, when we talk to God in prayer, we can speak to him about lots of things. We can thank him for things. We can ask him for things. But we can also tell him how we feel. We can tell him how frustrated we are that things aren't working out the way that we want them to. We don't have to put on a brave face for God can be honest with him. It says in the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Leave all your worries with him, because he cares for you. God cares for you. God cares for all of us. And he wants to hear about the things that upset us. He wants us to talk to him about the things that worry us, the things that we're disappointed about. We go through times when we can't see a way out. As we talk to God, we remember that we can trust him and that sometimes his answers to our prayers happen in the most unexpected of ways. When Moses and the people finally left Israel, they had another barrier. They were about to have to cross a sea and they had an army chasing them. But they could trust God because God opened up a way miraculously, opened up a path for them through the Red Sea. As we talk to God, as we tell him about the things that worry us, we can also trust him, that he's listening to us and that he may answer us in the most unexpected of ways. Let's pray together just now. Father God, this has been a year of so many disappointments. Things have not gone the way we expected. Many of the things we were looking forward to can't now happen. We are worried and unsure about what's going to happen next. It doesn't feel fair, and we get annoyed about it all. So Lord, we bring all of this to you, and leave our fears, our disappointments, our worries with you, because we know you, we can trust you, and because you care for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hope that you have fun today, making the craft that Ali and Freya showed us earlier from Messy Church. And we've also got some other activities as well. There's a, a megaphone you can make that says, I can talk to God. And there's some colouring in and a word search available too on the email where you can download from the church website. I'd also like to remind parents and carers about Parent Space that takes place every Monday night on Zoom at 8 o'clock. A chance for you to talk to other parents, support each other, encourage each other, Talk about the things that are going on in your lives just now. Also this week on Tuesday night, I'll be hosting a Zoom call 
for anyone that's interested in finding out more about St Andrew Blackadder Church, about who we are and what we do. It'll be an informal chat, a chance to meet some of the people that are involved in our church. You can get details about both those events by emailing admin at standrewblackadder.org.uk and you can also use that email address for any other queries or questions that you have about Sunday Club at Home. Next week will actually be the last Sunday Club at Home before this summer, but I'll be telling you all about our plans for the summer holidays with lots of new activities and new stories as part of our summer holiday club. But until then, I hope you have a really good week and we'll leave just now with our blessing song. The Lord bless you and keep you. Bye.